Well, I am. Uh, I'm so excited, and and just we're about to geek out um, uh, with Charles uh, Charles Bueller. He is uh, the founder of Exodus Propulsion Technologies, uh, NASA ex, uh, Electrostatics and Surface Physics Laboratory as well. He's an engineer. He believes he's found a way to overcome Earth's gravity. This is crazy. Welcome. Welcome, sir. Hey, thank you. Thank you for having me. So can you explain this as much as you can in layman's terms uh, on what you what you've discovered? Uh, sure. But I do have to caveat first that this is uh, not sanctioned by NASA. This is work that we've done outside of NASA as a team. Oh. And we're made up of a lot of scientists and engineers throughout the aerospace industry, but uh, this is not NASA work. And there's several Good. reasons for that. <clears throat> okay, good. I'm actually, I'm actually happier about that. I like private industry coming up with things. Okay, so Charles, tell me what you've done. Well, we've been uh, exploring um, propellantless propulsion for several members of our team for several years. Gosh, I've been doing it for 25 years. My colleagues have been doing it for about 15 years or so. But when we joined forces in 2016, we were able to see some magic happen. And then we didn't really understand it until about 2018. Um, and that's when we kind of hit the ground running once we understood it. And then uh, we didn't come public with it until earlier, earlier this year. So when you say you really didn't understand it, the articles that I've read say you still don't fully understand what's going on because it seems to break the laws of, of physics and gravity. That's correct. So when I say understand, we understand it from a classical point of view, but we know that can't be the full picture. There's got to be some right. kind of quantum mechanics involved. But we at least know enough to do Crazy. some engineering around it based on the conservation of energy laws. And okay. we've tested that. And we've made about 1,500 test articles in the last eight years. So okay. we're learning. We learn, every, you know, we learn every day because we test it about every day. So what this would allow uh, at scale, um, and if you could do it not in a vacuum, but space is a vacuum, so we, could, we know it would work in space. Is that right? Well, that's this. You know, we need that's that theory. verification you know, to prove that it is actually right. a separate force that we have not yet seen in nature. So to okay. do that, no one will believe you until you actually do it in space and see it move. Sure. So, so you, but you have found a way, I mean, when we think of sending things into space, we think rockets, and that is probably one of the more, more dangerous moments uh, when you're going into space is all of that thrust behind you coming from uh, propellants. Um, and, uh, and you found a way now to possibly put rockets into space without it really being a rocket what what is it that is the propellant well that's the nice thing about it it doesn't uh use propellant and it's in a, you know propellantless propulsion so you can imagine the skin of your aircraft being the thruster if you will it's a paradigm shift in the way we think about transportation it does seem to violate a lot of old classical laws like the rocket equation and other classical mechanics but those equations are gosh, almost 400 years old. We have a lot of new physics since then. And I think this is taking advantage of some of the, not the 20th century quantum mechanics as much, but more of the 19th century E&M physics, electricity and magnetism. So you're right. It will replace rockets because about 90% of the rockets by mass and volume is just fuel. Right. If you get rid of all that, if you get rid of all that, then you could theoretically start from Earth and go straight into space and then back and forth all over. Um, that is crazy. That will change yeah. everything. So, so it, it, when you say the skin of the plane or the rocket or whatever you're talking about, are, are, is it kind of like static electricity? Is that what you're? Well, I, I mean, I just out. don't even understand at all. <laughs> well, we, well, it turned out initially we thought I thought for 20 years that it had to do with uh, <clears throat> electromagnetism. So that's electricity and magnetism together. But we found out in 2018 it was really just a static electricity effect, which meant no current and the charges are static. That's a big distinction. 
It just happened to be the area of expertise that I am at NASA is the electrostatics expert for the agency. So once I knew that that's what it was, you know, I was able to hit the ground running and to get thrusters that, in theory, should be able to lift under their own weight on Earth, provided they didn't have to carry anything yet. We're still working on getting it stronger. But that's essentially the gist of it. Static electricity itself has energy. because There's energy between charged particles. We're all familiar with the Coulomb energy, you know, like particles, like you know, positive particles repel, you know, negative particles repel, but plus and minus attract. We're all familiar with that aspect of static right. electricity. What this has shown is that there is what we call electrostatic pressure in the presence of the field. It's basically uh, the pressure itself, which is not something I invented. That's been around for 100 years or so. But the pressure itself can act in such a way that if it's unbalanced, it can give you a net momentum transfer to your system. That's what's new. And how exactly this does this, I don't know. I'm not sure if I'll ever know, but it seems to work. So this is easy to manufacture. It's easy to test. Now, we've done all the testing in vacuum or in the lab. Now it's time to take the next step and put it in the earth a little bit and see what it does. Dr. Bueller, can I ask, I'm looking at a chart of your success, and it looks like in 2021, you just had phenomenal success, just skyrockets up to just over a G of uh, thrust. Mm -hmm. What happened at that time where you just exponentially start, started getting having more and more success? Well, we know that uh, static electricity, this force, is <clears throat> based on asymmetrical capacitance. Now, asymmetrical capacitors have been around for 100 years. People have seen thrust in them, but they've been kind of ignored from the scientific community because of a, an ion wind effect if you do it in air. But if you ignore that, and if you actually test it in vacuum and test it correctly, you'll see that you'll get the thrust actually in the opposite direction of the ion wind. But <clears throat> that's a geometry effect. So you know, parallel plate capacitors are parallel. If you change the dimension of one of them, you'll get a thrust. So that's a geometry effect. But there are many ways to make an asymmetrical capacitor other than geometry. So that's what we've explored, and that's what we've uncovered. And that helps. It makes things smaller, miniature, um, makes things two-dimensional, if you will, and, and lighter. So that's the, the big advancement that we've made. Are, are, is there, are there any videos that you guys have made showing this at all yet? So we have a couple on our website, and we're going to put a few more on in the next couple of weeks. But yes, so what we're doing now is we're trying to make videos uh, to show people how to build these. That's really the only way to get it out there, to kind of show people how this is done. So we have a couple of videos that we made, I don't know, five years ago, six years ago, that show the thrusters moving in air. So we have to encapsulate them in styrofoam, so it, it doesn't look very pretty. But styrofoam is a great dielectric. It's light. You know, it stops corona, what we call corona, from happening, which is a gas breakdown. We don't want any sparks or discharges or current, so we encapsulate everything. Styrofoam is light. It's a good source for that. So those videos are online. You can take a look at those. Okay, so that's at exodus per, 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 <laughs> dot space. Easy for me to say. Um, easier for you to type. Yeah. Um, so tell me... Um, the ramifications, if this is found to be uh, what you think it might be, tell me how our life and, and the things that could, it could do and would change. Well, clearly, it would revolutionize transportation as we know it. All forms of transportation. Cars, boats, All trains, planes, everything would change. You wouldn't need an engine. You wouldn't need a, a, uh, a combustion engine or, or to burn fossil fuels. You wouldn't need uh, propellers or wheels or tires. It would just revolutionize what? everything. If you could, yes, it would revolutionize everything if we can get this above, much above unity. Right now we're sort of hovering around unity, but you need a little bit more to carry something. So Okay, so wait a minute. Wait, wait, what's unity? Well, we define unity as the thrust needed to lift up the weight of the thruster. That's okay. How we so you need but to, you need to add more so you can put a 
body or stuff or whatever in that <laughs> that's thruster. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like it, okay. Yeah. So that's what that's what we need. So we need at least a double or triple the factor just so we can lift up the power supplies for it and 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 carry load, payload, whatever that is. So that's what we're working towards. But right I now, I have to tell you. We, go ahead. Well, I'm just saying right now we are above lunar unity. So for the moon, and NASA is very interested in go back to the moon as others are, we actually have way over lunar unity. So in theory, we could send objects to the moon using conventional rockets today and actually make spacecraft also be the hovercraft for the lunar surface. Never actually have to touch the surface unless they want to. That's very exciting. You don't want to touch the dust oh if you don't God. have to. <laughs> you can just hover above it and you can travel with the sun. There's a lot of cool things you could do with this technology, but it, a great demonstration of it would be on the moon. So this would help, uh, like, because I, as I understand it, one of the reasons we want to go to the moon again is we need a staging station uh, if we wanted to go to any of the outer planets. Um, this could make that, we wouldn't have to have that step if you didn't need the propulsion if you didn't need you know some propellant that you would have to get off the moon correct no you're absolutely absolutely right right now nasa's aim is to go to the south pole to extract water part of that water could be used for propulsion you could split up the hydrogen and oxygen but you wouldn't need to do that with this technology you would just go to the moon and then when you get tired of going to the moon you can go to mars right now we can go to the moon theoretically in about two and a half hours it's a very slow acceleration. Wait, 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 wait. What? What did you say? <laughs> well, since it's a constant thrust, theoretically, we should be able to put our thrusters in space and get to the moon in under three hours with the accelerations that we have. That's huge. <laughs> we can get to Mars in about five to six days. That very, very. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Uh, what? Okay, Hank, can you hang on just a sec? I just, I just, I, I need to take a one-minute commercial break, but we have to continue our conversation if you have time. Uh, we're talking to Dr. Charles Bueller, who is uh, with the Exodus Propulsion Technologies. Uh, he is the co-founder of that, um, and he has just, he and his team have come up with some unbelievable things that. Uh, that that will obviously change the entire world. This is so um, mind bending, honestly, Charles. I I don't even know what questions to ask uh, you. I've never I've never been in this position uh, before. H- how real is this? How how long will it take you to go from where you are now to being able to prove it with an actual, some sort of vehicle? Well, you know, that'll depend on funding and accessibility to space to, you know, verify that it's real. And then once it's verified in space, um, I think it'll be easier to get funding. And the aim of that funding would be to help us to try to um, look at all the different aspects of the force and how we can improve it. There's many ways that we could travel down, many paths. Um, so we'd like to explore all of those simultaneously, and that would help increase the test ratio that we need to. to really are you a publicly? Are you publicly traded, or or you're just looking for private funding? Uh, right now, we're just private, privately funded. Uh, uh, you should. Invest, so. You you should do crowdfunding as well as you know private, because I I think I, I think there's hundreds of millions of people that would love to see this would solve so many problems is this the kind of uh, you've only got a minute um is this the kind of technology that would explain some of the things we're seeing you know in those ufos that seem to just defy all physics it's possible um that it could explain some of it Uh, you know there's some you know other uh, things that we don't really understand that this theory could explain. Um, wow. A lot of time on it, but uh, I, it absolutely yeah. good. It is, a, it is a fundamental force. So that's uh, uh, it's fundamental. 
Charles Bueller, thank you so much. The name of his company is Exodus Propulsion Technologies. He's co founder of that. Uh, he's found a way to overcome gravity. <laughs> It's quite a remarkable time we live in. 